We thank you for your interest in our superfeeder. If you have not purchased one already, watching this installation and informational video will give you a good overview of its basic functionalities. This multi-purpose super feeder is unlike any other feeder on the market. This video will inform you about the many ways the feeder can be utilized. It will provide your pets with personalized custom portions. Koi pond and aquarium feeders will vary in accessories, but will operate identically to the cat feeder. We're a family-owned operation, and we are only one phone call or email away to personally answer any questions you may have. All of us at Superfeed want to say, We designed it. We market it. We manufacture it. Thank you. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for supporting for supporting Am American jobs. A super fed cat is a happy cat. <laughs>
and screw snugly one of the screws and washers to the extension on the back side of the feeder only. Leave the front hole on the extension without a screw. You will now attach the metal bracket utilizing the four 3 8 inch long screws. Attach the metal bracket as indicated with the L shaped across the back portion of the feeder and tighten the screws securely. Take the metal strap and place it across the front of the feeder. The hole for the screw should be closest to the bottom portion of the strap. Use one of the small screws without a washer for the strap and tighten snugly. Okay, moving on to the feeder stand assembly. On the bottom of the base, place the rubber feet in the designated areas. To attach the tower to the base, use four large head screws and tighten the screws securely. Okay, now use eight of the quarter inch short screws to attach the feeder and bracket to the tower. Now, I recommend not to fully tighten these screws at this step if you have our custom plastic bowl. Let's go ahead and attach the plastic bowl. The bowl has mounting pins on the front that will fit snugly around the two front tabs on the base of the stand. To do this, lift up on the feeder slightly and slide the bowl under the bracket. Slide it until the back of the bowl stops against the two back tabs on the base of the stand. The bowl does not go on top of the tabs in the back. Press down firmly on the front of the bowl to connect the front pins and tabs. Now tighten the eight bracket screws securely. It's going to be easy to take the bowl on and off to wash it when needed by gently pressing up on the feeder against the stand with a very small amount of pressure and lifting the front on the bowl as shown. This bowl is dishwasher safe and it's easy to disconnect from the feeder, but the animal will not dislodge the bowl. These tabs can also be used if you are wanting to use your own bowl, this way it will not slide off. For this step, let's go ahead and plug the power adapter into the wall outlet and unplug the rubber power plug and plug the power adapter plug into the feeder. Both the blue power indicator light and the green feed cycle light should come on. During a feed cycle, the roller should roll and the slide should shake. And if the feeder did not run a feed cycle when you first plugged in the feeder, just simply press the push button to reset it. The green light will turn off after the feed cycle ends. Depending on when your feeder was manufactured, you may only have a single green power light and no other LED lights. Functionally, either circuit works the same, so don't worry. If you have the power adapter plugged directly into the wall outlet or attached to a timer that is in the on position, you will always have some sort of LED power light continuously on, regardless of which circuit you have. Okay, now let's calibrate your feeder to give you the set amount of food that you want to be dispensed at every cycle for when the remote timer triggers on. First, let's adjust the food volume screw. If you turn it counterclockwise, the food gate will open more. Or if you turn it clockwise, the gate will close more. Adjust the gate so that the opening is approximately the size of your food and so that the food does not drop straight through. Go ahead and stack the second food extension onto the first and fill it with dry food. A few pieces may initially fall through when you first pour it, but this is normal. If you are utilizing a gallon hopper, go ahead and stack it directly on top of the first extension. You will not need the strap that came with the hopper unless you want to secure it outdoors on a 2x4 or a 4x4. If you have chosen to mount the feeder to a wood mount, simply use two large head screws on each side of the mount as shown. Since you have just filled the feeder with food, let's go ahead and run a few uh, feed cycles before fine tuning your calibration. Simply press the push button or lift the rubber plug to push it. By pressing this push button at any time when the power light is on, the current calibrated feed cycle will operate. 
run it a few times on the current calibration to get the food settled so that the portions are pretty accurate before we calibrate it to your preference. Now this is when we will be using the plastic adjustment screwdriver or you can use a small tip flat head screwdriver to calibrate your personal cycle. If you have not done so already, lift rubber plug to expose feeder calibration controls. Okay, now this is very simple. If you need more food at each cycle, turn the little brass screw clockwise, or less food, turn it counterclockwise. Continue to adjust and then press the reset button until you have the desired amount of food that you want to be dispensed at every cycle. One rule of thumb, approximately one quarter turn will increase or decrease the food cycle by one second. You may turn this multiple turns up to approximately 15 turns before it maxes out to reach your desired cycle time. And please note, if you have a later model feeder, the adjustment dial may look like this type. It will not turn multiple turns, so don't try to turn it more than once. Just always remember that the two items that you adjust for the food volume are the food volume screw and the feed cycle adjustment. The most accurate portions have been achieved by customers who have used small round kibbles of a quarter inch diameter. Now you most likely won't need to use the small screws and washers for the food extensions on the cap or the optional hopper. But if you do use them, you do not have to unscrew them each time to take the cap off, okay? Just simply squeeze the plastic to take the cap off. These screws are mainly for outdoor use to keep wild animals from reaching the food. Now your feeder is calibrated to your custom settings. Once you set the time for which you want to feed your pet, you will then attach the power adapter to the timer and plug the timer into the wall. All timers vary, so please read the instructions on how to program your timer. If you have our analog timer, let's say that the current time is 7 a.m. Simply turn the dial clockwise to the current time on the time mark. If you want to feed at 12 p.m., simply push the pin outward that is on the left side of the 12 o'clock mark. Each pin is an on time of 15 minutes on this particular timer. Also be sure to have the timer in timer mode and not in manual mode. Even though the minimum time the timer is on is for 15 minutes, the feeder is only going to feed the calibrated time interval that you previously set. Then once the timer turns off, the feeder will reset after two minutes for a new cycle. So technically, you could feed 48 times every 24 hours with this timer. Therefore, always remember that the timer or other device utilized to trigger your feeder must have an off time of at least 2 minutes to reset the feeder for the next cycle. This is one aspect that makes this feeder so versatile because you can trigger it on by various devices, not just by timers. You could use a home automation system, a mobile web camera system to trigger it and watch your animal eat, or a sprinkler timer for outdoor use. By utilizing the auxiliary input, the feeder can be powered by any 6 to 24 volts AC or DC remote device. As you can see, you can set up the feeder in various ways as well. You can mount it to the wall for a smaller profile look if you'd like. The possibilities are limitless with the super feeder. Thank you for watching this video.